How would you go about collecting the Power 9 without spending thousands or tens of thousands of dollars? We're going to talk about unconventional ways of collecting the Power 9 in this video. So let's talk about the Power 9. When we're talking about the Power 9, we're talking about Black Lotus, the Five Moxes, Time Twister, Time Walk, and Ancestral Recall. And these nine cards have always been a rare and iconic piece of Magic the Gathering's history. Even back in the 90s when I was playing, these cards were rare and iconic. They weren't as valuable or as well taken care of back in the 90s, but they were rare and iconic. And you may have seen my previous video where we went through some of the prices back in 1995 when I started playing Magic. So here it is, the Black Lotus. The upper price, 275 the median, 250 and the lower price, $200. An Alpha Lotus going for under 300 bucks. So nowadays, if you were looking to buy a piece of power, you'd probably be looking to spend three or four grand. And even then, after spending three or four grand, the card you'd get is probably going to be heavily played. And so to get all nine of these, and especially the Black Lotus, you would have to spend either a really big chunk of a down payment on a house or more than you would pay for a brand new car. Let's just say it gets pretty expensive. So how do you go about collecting the Power 9 if you don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars? So obviously, if you want to spend less money, you can get a card that's in not as good condition. Picking up a heavily played or a moderately played card is definitely going to be cheaper than picking up a near mint one. And that can save you thousands or tens of thousands of dollars as you're picking up all nine of the cards. Another option is to try and get collector's edition cards because those might be half as much as what you would pay for a regular one. And I guess the downside of that is that you can't use them in a tournament, but if you're just a collector, then maybe that doesn't matter. I suppose another downside is that you get the squared off corners, but if that doesn't matter to you, then the collector's edition would be a great option. But even the collector's edition and the international collector's edition are still going to cost in the thousands of dollars. So here's something that I'm doing to try and collect Power 9 cards, but not spend that much money and still be satisfied with the cards that I'm getting. So here are the two criteria that I care about as I'm collecting the Power 9. One, it needs to be a real card, meaning it needs to have been a card printed by Wizards of the Coast. And the second thing is, you guys know how much I love the artwork of Magic the Gathering, and so the second thing is, I need it to be the artwork from the original artist. And so if it has those two things, then I'm satisfied. It doesn't have to be the original card that you can use in a legacy tournament, but to me, as long as it's real, and it has the artwork from the original artist, then that's fine with me. And I'm satisfied and I'm happy with that. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm looking into artist proofs. So if you don't know, artist proofs are cards that are printed by Wizards of the Coast, but they don't have a magic back to them. They have a blank white backing to them. And only around 50 of those proofs are made, and those 50 cards are given to the artist. And since there's only 50 of these proofs made and given to the artist, it's kind of a rare thing. And I think right now, a lot of artist proofs are kind of undervalued. Having only 50 copies of a card is pretty rare. And especially some of these iconic cards, getting one of these 50 copies can be a really valuable thing. And for me, being a huge fan of the artists and the artwork, these rare artist proofs are the perfect thing for me to try and collect. And a cool thing about these artist proofs is because they have the white back, you can have the actual original artist do a sketch or a painting on them. Of course, you have to pay for that, but for me, that's really cool. Having the artist do an original drawing, sketch, or painting on your card is just really cool to me. Back in the 90s when I went to my last big event, Pro Tour New York in 99, I had some of the artist's sketch in my binder. And honestly, that's still one of my prized possessions when it comes to the Magic the Gathering stuff that I have. Another thing that I've looked into is getting altars done by the original artist. And I think this is cool too, because you can have an actual magic card printed by Wizards of the Coast, and you can have artwork done by the original artist, but it doesn't have to be the artwork that was on the original card, if you don't want it to be. And that's actually what we're gonna be looking at today and opening up is a piece of power that I got that's an altar from one of the original Power 9 artists. So let's open it up and take a look. Here is what I got in the mail yesterday, which is gonna be the first piece of power for my collection. Again, not the actual Power 9 card, but the way that I'm going about collecting the Power 9 definitely is a little bit different, but 
gives me a lot of satisfaction and I was really excited to uh, get this package. So let's open it up. All right, here it is. Let me get this off. So we can do the big reveal. All right. So let me just take it out real quick. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's like a little envelope with some stickers on it. Huh. Maybe we should open that first. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. It's got like a little letter inside. So maybe this will give you guys a clue to who the artist is and what the card is. It says, <laughs> hello, thank you. And if you can see that artist's signature and you recognize it, then you'll know what the card is, but... That is pretty cute. Pretty darn cute. Alright, here it is. Let me actually just take it out of the... sleeve. So if you haven't guessed yet, This is by the artist Amy Weber, the amazing Amy Weber, who did the original art for Time Walk. And so she took a foil card and turned it into a Time Walk. So she even put the name, she put art like the original art, she put the description, take an extra turn after this one with her signature and the date and so there it is that is my first power nine card that i'm putting into my collection a foil time walk so i know some people are going to say you know that's not a real power nine you're not doing a real power nine collection and you know in in a way they're right but I think really it's just about what makes you happy as a collector, as a player. You know, what do you like when it comes to Magic the Gathering? And for me, I love the artwork and I love the artists. And so getting a foil time walk made by Amy Weber herself is just really exciting and fun for me and it makes me happy. And so this is going to be the first piece of power in my unconventional Power 9 collection and I have a couple more pieces of power on the way, and so stay tuned for that, but thanks for taking a look at this with me. Thanks for going through this video with me. I hope you guys had fun looking at this piece of power. I'm talking about the Power 9, and hopefully I can keep this quest going. I've got a couple more pieces of power in the works, so stick around for those videos coming up so you can see the other pieces of power that I'm adding to my collection. And if you haven't yet, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can see when these other videos are coming out. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.